Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ESMWF, the GFS Ensembles and the UK Met Office run as well. Now we've got a very muddled picture coming up over the next few weeks. I just saw one video yesterday, there is potential for ex-hurricanes and tropical storms that can throw an absolute spanner in the works. It's going to power up the jet stream over the next week or two and there's potential even for some stormy weather in there. We're even seeing on the models this evening that it potentially early next week there are some models and some ensemble members potentially showing a brief hot plume now um, for a day or two sort of on sunday monday time as before the low pressure arrives in the atlantic dives southwards and brings up some warmer air from spain so we'll run through the latest runs and you can see um, the disparity between the models even sort of in the four or five day time frame um, and that's why there's so much uncertainty at this stage as it really is um, because we have to see how this block breaks down and how these uh, tropical systems interact with the jet streams so there's a lot of uncertainty uh, it'll be interesting to see how it does play out so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on twitter as well the link is in the description so if you do run through the latest gfs you can see the high pressure over the top of the uk at the moment um, we've got decently warm upper air temperatures, but um, we have a bit of an inversion going on, as I said in the video yesterday. We've got a lot of cloud, especially in the south and the east, with that easterly breeze. Um, further westwards in parts of Scotland is actually been pretty pleasant, with some sunshine and temperatures getting to the low 20s. Unfortunately, under the cloud, it's more like high teens, feeling a little bit chilly. That high pressure sticks around into the weekend. And it's this low that's getting powered by the jet stream um, that we've got to keep an eye on. Now, it does sort of dip southwards. Um, and at this point, the jet stream is fighting off the block that we see is going towards Scandinavia. And for a brief period of time, we are pulling up some warm, if not hot, southerly wind. So by Sunday, Monday time, you can see 850 HPA while the jet stream is powering up we're actually bringing in a brief period of pretty hot conditions especially in the south potentially 15 maybe higher at 850 hpa which is pretty pretty warm indeed um, which could temperatures into the mid to, mid to high 20s potentially and we're going to see that on this latest gfs run now there is a lot of uncertainty even by early next week so in sort of five six days time um and yeah, just you can just see here that if we see a subtle shift in that uh, low pressure location, you can see that hot air is shunted to the east or to our south. So at this stage, um, it's not guaranteed, um, but there are some models showing it. So if you are wanting some hot weather, there is still the potential to get a day or two here or there, um, as you can see how quickly these things pop up in the models. Also, though, because it is in influenced by low pressure, there is the potential, of course, of seeing some thunderstorms, as ever with hot and humid air and low pressure involved, bring that instability in. There is the potential for thunderstorms, but we won't be having a look at that uh, today. Um, we'll only really be having a look at thunder thunderstorm risk um, if we have a pretty good idea that there's going to be hot and humid um, and low pressure involved. Beyond that, though, you can see that hot air gets swept away by low pressure in off the jet stream. And you see that westerly wind coming in, real quite brisk westerly wind. And then you see that hurricane or ex-hurricane um, out in the Atlantic. And that is going to be spreading over the high pressure, powering up the jet stream and potentially bringing some stormy conditions to the UK for a time. We've got real warm sector in there, so that's going to really power up the rain. You can see how very strong temperature gradients and that's going to spin up these lows and as we head right towards the end of the run you can see we just got westerly winds and a lot of low pressure around if we do have a look at the gfs at the temperatures just show you what we could be seeing early next week if it does come off you see in the next few days it's going to be around 15 16 degrees potentially in the cloud a bit warmer elsewhere as we head to Saturday, we do start to see some warmer air come in as we've got those southerly winds, potentially 21, 22 degrees in a few spots. By Sunday, 25, 26 in the south, a bit cooler in the north, but still getting up to 20 degrees or so. And then as we head to Monday afternoon, 26, 27 or even 28 degrees is possible uh, for next Monday in five days' time. So um, that's truly exceptional to be coming from uh, the GFS is this short time range, um, time frame, and it's only really cropped up in uh, in the models over the last day or so. 
Um, and you can see it here. We'll show the GEM, which goes to the complete opposite. Temperatures were struggling to get into 20 degrees. And then the UK Met Office runs actually sort of in the middle. So, yeah, we really don't actually know exactly what's going to be happening in terms of temperatures. We just generally know that low pressure is starting to push in. Whether it does bring in this hot and humid air like the GFS is showing, it's pretty uncertain. And you can see, even see by Tuesday, still temperatures into the mid-20s, 26, 27. And by Wednesday, it is still there, 25, 26. And it is slowly being swept over by Thursday. Western air is cooler, sort of 26, 27 in the east. So could be seeing a prolonged warm spell there um, if we do see this GFS scenario come off. Now, it is unlikely as it only has about a quarter of the ensembles going for it. But it is a solution. So we can't discount it. Um, and it is pretty uncertain to be seeing these drastic shifts within ensembles and models at the five-day time frame where we sh pretty much normally have a good idea um, and we do on the pressure pattern, um, but exactly what air mass we're going to be having is the uncertainty at this stage. If we do have a look at the GM, which is vastly different at uh, sort of day seven than the GFS, you can see high pressure at the moment bringing in those cool drab conditions in off the east coast. And you do see that low pressure does move in. But you can see it's a bit stronger and a bit further northwards, so it doesn't dive quite as southwards and doesn't bring up um, those warm air to the south. And that hot air gets pushed out into France, Germany. We could be seeing temperatures into the mid to high 20s. For the UK, though, um, by early next week, we just have that low pressure. So it's very, very similar in terms of pressure patterns. However, the air mass, because of the slight shift in where that low pressure is positioned and the slight shift in those southerly winds, means we're just going to be staying in sort of average, uh, mild Atlantic air instead of this hot plume from the south. Um, so, yeah, you can see the drastic changes just between these two models um, by sort of next Monday, next Tuesday. Beyond that, though, it doesn't does look like even on the GM, westerly winds are going to be taking hold. Um, seeing a bit of an interesting diving low there, but still, westerly winds um, with low pressure involved. To what extent, whether we're going to be seeing really stormy conditions or just generally unsettled conditions is still a little bit uncertain at this stage, but it definitely does look like this block is definitely going to be gone um, by this time next week. If we do have a look at the GF GM temperatures, just to give you an idea of what we could be seeing, um, so you can see 21, 22 on Saturday. Sunday, only 22, 23 degrees um, on Sunday. Uh, where the GFS was going for 5 degrees warmer. So still, it's decent, but it's not anywhere near as hot as the GFS, um, which is which went pretty, pretty darn hot indeed. And, and as we head through to Monday, you see temperatures, high teens, maybe 20 degrees, so vastly different to the GFS. And then by Tuesday, we have westerly winds moving in with temperatures into the mid-teens, potentially. So it just shows you amount of uncertainty at this stage, um, even in the short term, term uh, short time frame. So we could be seeing a very hot spell, or we could just be seeing this low pressure move in with more wind and rain. If we do have a look at the ECMWF, you can see we have that diving low, does go quite far south, and then we do pull up with that southerly wind. Now, very, very similar to the GFS um, in terms of its southerly wind. It actually moves further northwards and is very, very warm indeed. Could be seeing temperatures getting up into the mid to high 20s, perhaps, with that. If we have a look at the temperature deviation, you can see it's a good four, five, six, maybe even more uh, degrees above average, getting up towards maybe eight or nine degrees above average in a few spots for the UK um, for this time of year at 850 HPA. So truly, truly hot air could be heading towards the UK, um, shown on the east and the UF and the GFS, but haven't got support from the GM and the majority, or at least half to two thirds of the GFS ensembles aren't quite, go quite, to this, aren't quite going to this ex uh, extent. Beyond that, though, as we had to stay, had to head towards day 10, you can see just low pressure is rumbling in off the Atlantic. Block out in Europe is trying to hold on, but you can see that the uh, you can see uh, UK is generally in more of a low pressure influence with more cloud and definitely some more rain around. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles at 850 HP and temperature, you can see the big big model disparity even by sort of the 6th 7th of september definitely does like low pressure is going to be influenced there's going to be some rain potentially for some thunderstorms around as well but you can see a massive change in temperatures some including the operational gfs going up to 14 15 16 degrees a and 50 hpa which would give mid to high 20s others are going a lot cooler with a more progressive low pressure system 
with temperatures going around or below average. The majority, though, are 10 degrees or higher, 850 HPA. So, yeah, we're just going to have to see really how this plays out. I do suspect it will be resolved in the next day or two, um, or maybe even in the, in the next run or two. Um, but at this stage, as I'm recording this video, there is still a lot of uncertainty exactly over um, what's going to be happening with these um, upper air temperatures. In the longer term, though, you can see temperatures are trending to around average. A lot more um, sort of vari variability in the ensemble, so a lot more uncertainty, of course. But it definitely does look like low pressure is going to be in control. As you can see, the precipitation spikes are going up um, a lot more frequently than we have at the moment where we still got a good few dries uh, dry days left if you have a look at the mean sea level pressure you can see generally high pressure at the moment before we do see plunging low pressure uh, and you can see the very big um uncertainty by uh, monday with some going high pressure some going or well, some going slightly high pressure some going slightly lower pressure um, and that's really going to make all the difference how pro progressive this low is you can see in the longer term things look generally um, low pressure or around average or mean pressure in between high and low pressure which will generally be showery uh, and cloudy as well you can even see there's one going really deep and that would be uh, probably an ensemble that really sparks up one of those x hurricanes so you can see a lot of uncertainty over the next few weeks so i do suspect some of my forecasts are going to be quite severely wrong um over the next week or two because at this stage, things are flipping pretty much every single run. We could see this hot spell that we're looking at right now completely disappear over the next model run. Or um, or it could get sort of, uh, could consolidate. So, yeah, we'll just have to see really what happens. If we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, if we do have a look at the temperatures first, just see how that compares to the GFS and the GM in terms of that hot spell early next week, potentially. You can see um, Wednesday afternoon today, it's been around high teens um, for many areas, maybe 21, 22 degrees in Scotland and parts of Ireland where we've seen some brighter spells. Free Thursday, once again, a drab day in a few areas, maybe mid to high teens, maybe 20 degrees in the south, feeling all right. By Friday, things are looking still a little bit drab, but 21, 22 degrees potentially across the south coast, 18, 19 degrees elsewhere. By Saturday, temperatures are sliding upwards, maybe 22 degrees in the south, 20 degrees in Ireland, and maybe 19, 20 degrees in many parts of England. By Sunday, you can see we are pulling in that hotter air. Within the UK Met Office run, 23, 24 degrees, or even 25 degrees is possible across parts of England and Wales, even into northern England and Scotland, maybe 20, 21 degrees, which is warm for this time of year. You can see even overnight, 3 a.m. Monday, 19, 20 degrees, so showing you warm upper air, upper air temperatures are going to mean temperatures won't be dipping too far at night. So, yeah, really interesting to see what happens over the next sort of day or so with the models seeing what happens um, to this hot spell we could be seeing potentially next Monday um, but at the same time it could completely disappear and this video is made completely redundant um, but we will just have to see that is the the joy of looking at these models um, normally it's very frustrating when we have sort of flips like this in the winter where we could have a beast from the east pattern sort of five six seven days out we've had that many times before uh the beast from the east on sort of the seven day time frame just for it to disappear completely uh, within a day or two so it is just the it's just really uh, just really what happens uh, with these weather models when we've got a confusing picture. So, as I said, you just need to stay tuned, um, and I'll be updating this once again tomorrow. And I'll probably be able to say with a bit more certainty to smart tomorrow what is going to be happening. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.